پزشکی پی اچ دی استودنت اف مکانیکال انجینیرینگ ات پلی تکنیکو دی میلانو دیس از مای پرزنتیشن اون ا کمپرهنسیو نومریکال فریم ورک تو استادی دی افکت اف پروسس پارامترز اون کولد اسپری کوتینگ اند ال ای دی مانوفکچرینگ دیس پرزنتیشن کانتینز دی ریزالتس اف ریسرچ بای می دکتر سارا باغی فرد مستر داوید کولزانی اند پروفسور ماریو گوالیانو I will start by introducing the cold spray method and its different aspects. Then I will compare the available finite element methods that can be used for simulation of cold spray. After that, I will go over the fundamentals of our finite element model, including adhesion model, geometry, materials, etc. After that, one by one, I will go over the parameters that we have studied and their effect on different aspects of cold spray process. and i will finish the presentation by providing you some concluding remarks cold spray is a solid state powder deposition method in which small particles of micron scale are carried with a gas of relatively low temperature and while being conveyed through a global nozzle they achieve supersonic velocities somewhere between 300 to 1200 meters per second and after that they heat the substrate surface Upon impacting the substrate surface, they attach to it because of two basic phenomena, metallic interlocking and adiabatic shear instability. This process has some advantages such as no powder melt, low oxidation, high density, controllable porosity and also presence of a compressive residual stress. However, there are also some limitations for the cold spray process. Uh, such as a sprayability limitation of some materials and some material combinations, a minimum required substrate hardness for the success of the process, a relatively high gas consumption, and also limited line of sight. Due to these unique characteristics, cold spray can be used for a variety of applications, such as adding a desired function to the surface, protecting the spray section against destructive environmental factors, using the cold spray to repair a damaged section, or using cold spray as an additive manufacturing method. However, for each application, two sets of parameters, namely primary and secondary, should be carefully selected. In this presentation, we are going to discuss the effect of these six primary parameters on different aspects of cold spray process. The three shown finite element methods, including Lagrangian, coupled Euler and Lagrangian, and smooth particle hydrodynamics are the main methods that can be used to simulate the particle impact during the cold spray. However, due to their unique capabilities and shortcomings that can be seen in the diagram on the right, each of them is more suitable for studying the effect of a different set of process parameters. Particle diameter is assumed to be 40 micrometers and the substrate edge is assumed to be 240 micrometers long. Both of them are considered to be made of pure aluminium. The plasticity of the material is modeled using Johnson Cook plasticity and the shear damage is integrated in the material model. Both of the particle and substrate are assumed to have a temperature of 293 degrees of Kelvin and when applicable symmetry bonding conditions are applied on relevant surfaces. For 3D models, 8 node element with reduced integration and hourglass control are applied both for a sphere and uh, the substrate. We first start by running an impact model without adhesion, then we select the elements from the outer surface of the par uh, particle that have a specific value for their STEG, and in a new model, we apply adhesion only to those elements. Based on previous researches and observations, a window can be considered for the particle velocity at which the successful deposition takes place. For velocities lower than that, we will have the rebounding of the particle. And for velocities higher than that, we will have the erosion of the surface and again an unsuccessful adhesion. To model the lower limit, we only consider adhesion of surface, part, uh, surface elements of the particle for which their STEG value is at a specific range. And for modeling the upper threshold, we integrate a traction separation damage model into our cohesive contact interaction. 
using the single particle impact model that uh, we developed with the Lagrangian method, we consider three cases with particles with diameters equal to 40, 60, and 70 micrometers. And in each case, we measured the minimum required velocity for a successful adhesion, or in other words, the critical velocity. Uh, in agreement with previous exp uh, experiments and observations, uh, it was seen that increase of the particle size will result in a decrease in the critical velocity. Using the same finite element model, this time we consider three different sets of material parameters for the substrate. Uh, for ABS polymer, which is the softest of uh, the three, we almost never achieved successful adhesion, even at velocities as high as 900 meters per second. For a substrate made of aluminum, uh, we achieved adhesion at a correct critical velocity, which in this case was equal to 525 meters per second. And uh, finally, for the hardest one out of uh, all the three, which was uh, a 1040 carbon steel substrate, we observed a successful adhesion at a relatively low critical velocity, equal to 400 meters per second, and also a successful adhesion at a broad spectrum of the particle velocity. Previous researches indicate that a more acute angle of impact will result in a lower deposition rate and hence a higher porosity. To evaluate that, we used a multi-particle impact CEL model that consists of 50 particles with a diameter equal to 30 micrometers on a cylindrical substrate with a diameter equal to 800 micrometers and a height equal to 200 micrometers. As can be seen, we evaluated porosity for deposition of these particles with three different angles of impact equal to 90, 75, and 60 degrees. As indicated in the diagram on the left, we can see an increase of about 3% in the overall average porosity when we go from 90 to 60 degrees for the angle of impact. We used a single particle Lagrangian model to analyze the effect of particle impact angle on the adhesion and critical velocity. For this purpose, we consider three impact angles equal to 60, 45, and 30 degrees. And for each angle, we consider particle velocities ranging from 500 to 900 meters per second, increasing the particle velocity in 100 meter step. As can be seen, both in our findings and also the previous experiments, which are shown below, as the angle of impact decreases, the area of the adhesion does also decrease. It means that for more acute angles of impact, we need higher particle velocities to achieve a successful adhesion and deposition. However, for particle velocities as high as 700 meters per second, we had a very small area of adhesion for impact angle equal to 30 and almost no successful adhesion and deposition. The solvents that are used in cold spray process come in a variety of shapes and sizes. The more regular morphologies, which can be seen on the left, including the spherical and ellipsoid shapes, are usually the result of gas atomization process. However, the more irregular shapes, including dodecahedron and hexahedron shapes, are results of high pressure water atomization. When compared, irregular shapes will have a higher drag coefficient. So for a given and constant gas pressure and temperature, the irregular particles will achieve higher velocities. In this case, we considered four representative shapes that can be seen in the image with a constant and equal mass and also, in all cases, we consider equal velocities. We have tested the previously discussed multiparticle CEL model to analyze the variation of porosity of deposits for different particle morphologies. As can be seen in the table on the left, we see an increase in the porosity as the irregularity of the particles increases. However, it is worth mentioning that the variation of porosity for 
spherical to ellipsoid particles is almost negligible. Next, we use the single particle Lagrangian model to analyze the critical velocity of particles with different morphologies. For this purpose, for each morphology we considered the principal uh, angles of impact that represent a general case for each particle morphology and we reported the average value for the critical velocity of each morphology in the table below. Again, as you can see, we see an increase in the critical velocity as the irregularity of the morphology of the particle increases. For conventional spherical particles, the deformation ratio, also known as flattening ratio, is defined as the ratio of the initial diameter over the height of the deformed splat. However, this definition cannot be accurately applied to particles with irregular morphologies. For this purpose, we propose a new definition for the deformation ratio. To calculate this proposed parameter, we consider the middle cross-section as the representative section of each morphology. We start by calculating moment of inertia about the horizontal axis of symmetry for each shape, then we calculate the radius of gyration, and finally we calculate the deformation ratio by dividing the initial radius of gyration by final radius of gyration. As can be seen in the table below, for particles with different morphologies but constant masses and uh, impact velocity equal to 650 meters per second, we can see an increase in the average value for the deformation ratio as the irregularity of the particle increases. In the final part, we use the single particle Lagrangian model to analyze the effect of presence and thickness of oxide layer on the critical velocity. For this purpose, we created a half model of the particle and substrate using the symmetry available in the impact phenomena and model the particle and the oxide layer as two different parts which are connected uh, to each other using a tie constraint. As in all previous analysis, the particle itself is assumed to be made of aluminium with a diameter equal to 40 micrometers. However, the oxide layer is made of alumina, uh, a brittle material, in which the brittle behavior is modeled using the johnson holmquist type 2 equation, which is already available in Abacus software. For the purpose of this research, and based on previous reported results, we use three different thicknesses for the oxide layer equal to 100, 200, and 300 nanometers. Our model was able to predict a realistic behavior in which the critical velocity of the particle increases as does the thickness of the oxide layer. And also the breaking of oxide layer initiates at the outer edges of the particle upon impact. As we discussed in this presentation, while cold spray is a very powerful and promising coating and additive manufacturing process, a careful selection of process parameters is necessary for a successful application of cold spray. We showed that different finite element modeling techniques are capable of simulating effect of variation of different process parameters on various aspects of cold spray, such as deposition efficiency, critical velocity, and porosity, with the Lagrangian method being the most capable method in the small scale. We discussed the details and also employed a new enhanced adhesion model which can help us more accurately predict the window of deposition and the critical velocity of particles in different conditions. However, further experimental measurements are required for extracting adhesion model parameters for common materials. Thank you for your time and attention.